All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jolene Mujica. I'm the head of Trends and Tours at Windowsware. Uh, welcome to our, our Tuesday edition of Windowsware Live. Today, we're gonna take a look at some new stories and uh, see what's going on uh, in the retail industry. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to submit those uh, in the chat of Zoom, where we're currently uh, streaming, or uh, LinkedIn, Instagram Live, Facebook Live, I believe that's all. So feel free to chat, leave comments or uh, questions and we can get to those. So let's go ahead and get started and talk about um, some sustainability efforts that Selfridges is making. So uh, street side sustainability and how Selfridges is using their window displays to sell a message and not just products, right? Selfridges latest windows reflect their new sustainability commitments towards 2025. You know, when sitting behind a screen, it's really easy to become alienated from the real world impact of your actions. And whereas smart in-store retail makes for more considered human moments, right? So physical stores are also becoming this way, uh, becoming a way more than just a touch point or a point of purchase, right? More like experiential crucibles for innovative practices ranging from environmental education to closed loop design. And physical retail stores can also help to reshape consumer culture from repackaging to resale, redesign, repair, uh, education. It all allows us to rethink how we're shopping. And Selfridges is trying to tick all of those boxes, right? So here we get a nice, beautiful image. Uh, the role of shop windows, of course, and uh, visual merchandising is changing, and this curated preview of a new season's collection will no longer cut it, right? It's a phenomenon that's been accelerated during the COVID era, but it also prompted some brands, Selfridges among them, to make even more shoppable storefronts, right? But trying to sell product is no longer the sole goal, not explicitly anyway. Instead, the storefronts are about selling the entire an entirely new way of thinking about retail, which should then unfold inside into the store. Bold imagery, which is a uh, trademark of Selfridges and their visual merchandising style, always grabs the attention of passersby who can then get closer to discover its connection to an in-store initiative. And in this case, you know, it's a beautiful pop of color. It's really smartly designed. White where you have these um, bright yellow garbage bins. So we can take a look at this one right here. Uh, bright yellow garbage bins that are encircled, encircling a tree are teamed up with this plaque stating that Selfridges has been zero waste to landfill since 2014, while a hand embroidered Selfridges bag promotes its repair station. So the Project Earth campaign, which Selfridges has started, sets out to change the way we shop by centering on sustainability, right? Visitors will now find clothing rental, secondhand, uh, secondhand fashions, recycled and refilling stations, and sustainable, uh, sustainably oriented events, right? Fashion houses and big brands like Prada are also on board with this, launching their sustainable re-nylon collection in their corner shop at Selfridges. Selfridges is also working with all of its brands to question how things are made so that by 2025, the most environmentally impactful materials used through their businesses will come from certified sustainable sources. And when Selfridges puts the wheels in motion for Project Earth, which was over two years ago, they could have hardly anticipated this global pandemic would hit before the launch date. But those behind the project really feel that this COVID era has only increased its relevance even more. A lot of people are questioning the idea of excess currently, you know, as shopping behaviors change dramatically over the course of the past eight months. Uh, I think people are really at a point of, you know, do we need all the excess? So for Selfridges, this was a very smart initiative to really push during this time. And after uh, years of individual complaining that companies should take their fair share of responsibility for sustainability and circularity, rather than leaving things up to the consumer, it's certainly promising to see these larger retailers really stepping up to the plate. 
let's jump on over to take a look at what's going on with uh, Uniqlo. Why does Uniqlo believe that stores shouldn't just be about shopping, but they should what they should what that could potentially look like in practice, right? So here we have a fantastic example of something uh, that is interactive, it's immersive, it is uh, digging into the culture, it is adding to the cultural uh, landscape, the figurative and literal landscape of the neighborhood, right? It's adding value, it's giving people a place to commune. So let's see what in Uniqlo's perspective, um, this sort of thing should really look like. So stores, uh, obviously at this point, they don't need to just be for shopping, right? This idea is beautifully demonstrated in Uniqlo's recent uh, Yokohama Bayside store in Japan. Uniqlo wants their clothes to be suitable and affordable for everyone. So in that sense, online shopping is their most efficient uh, for both them and their customers, right? But not everyone knows Uniqlo, right? While Uniqlo is a large global brand, you know, er they always want to introduce themselves to new customers and to uh, new demographics. And those who don't know Uniqlo are not very likely to go directly to a website to shop. Their first point of contact tends to be the physical store, something that they would see at a mall or on Fifth Avenue or on the Champs Elysees, right? Which is why they take their store design very seriously as a company. And they've taken things even further since 2018 when Uniqlo developed this new retail concept in the age of e-commerce, right? So it's a companion piece. Uh, it's not uh, contradictory, right? They work together. And Uniqlo understands that people really need a reason to visit brick and mortar stores. So they want to make shopping as delightful an experience as possible. Nothing is more delightful than putting in a giant slide and playground into your space, right? The Yokohama Bayside store, for example, it functions as a park. And while many Uniqlo stores are located in commercial centers in large cities or in residential areas for easy access, Uniqlo has positioned this specific store, the Yokohama Bayside store, outside as a destination space, right? A destination store. The entire roof was converted into a playground. So you can see what that looks like here. Uh, with a bouldering area and a playground built by Japanese uh, purveyor of playground equipment, Borlund. And people can also bring along picnics, they can eat lunch while overlooking the beautiful marina. And this is also situated in front of the Tokyo Bay, uh, which is a place of gathering anyway, right? It's conceived as a place for families to go and relax, uh, shop, have a meal, have an entire day, rather than somewhere where they would just go uh, to shop and then hop in their cars and go home. It's meant, again, to be a community space. And I think Uniqlo has done a fantastic job of uh, really enforcing fun and function, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at, whoops. Uh, let's take a look at Munich and see uh, their new store opening. So uh, Madrid just had a new store opening and I know that seems like uh, it's an interesting that you know we have so many store openings happening right now, which is uh, contrary to popular belief. Like most people think you know brick and mortar is dying or you know there's there's a lull, but it's it's actually doing quite well. We're in a transition period, of course, as to how uh, shopping behaviors are shifting, but people are still going to stores um, and stores are still opening. So for Munich, they were founded in 1939. They're a shoemaker. Uh, Munich has since become this household name in Spain, right? Initially manufacturing only shoes. They've now expanded into various different kinds of collections, handbags, accessories, and the Barcelona-based company values their brick and mortar presence and have become known for their many design-led spaces nationwide. So uh, it's very architectural. Let's take a look at some of these images, which are really, really beautiful. They're geometric, they're bold, they're symmetrical, right? They have built this 12-sided space inside the crowning of a pyramid, just like a circus tent, if that's the feeling you're getting. Uh, that's completely intentional in the design. And each side is in intended for a specific use. Two corners at the back of the store are marked in bright red where all the discount merchandise can be found. That's what you're seeing currently in this image. And the corners flanking the entrance uh, feature these niche uh, bags and accessories, right? 
the 12 sides of furniture or the 12 sided piece of furniture in the center, which you can see photographed here. And there it is, and that beautiful bright red um, showcases the latest products that are released uh, while simultaneously reflecting the pyramid that covers in its multiple different kinds of ways. So additional furnishings include a cash wrap in this similar big bright red and a triangular seating area that contrasts in bright yellow, right? So this space is all about uh, geometry and symmetry and boldness with a little bit of whimsy thrown in there with the idea that it feels a bit like a, like a circus. So it's a beautifully designed store. Let's take a look at uh, Alibaba and uh, what's going on over in uh, China, right? So Alibaba wants American brands, the same ones that Amazon wants, right? So Alibaba's marketplace for international um, for international brands, it's called Tmall Global. They are wanting to help small businesses and medium business sized uh, US brands sell to young Chinese consumers at a time particularly when international travel is limited and the demand for unique international product is higher than ever, right? It's building itself up to be a global rival, rival to Amazon. And if you've never heard of Alibaba, Alibaba and the Tmall Global are hosting their first ever pitch fest for United States based brands to apply to sell on their marketplace in a time just in time for Singles Day on November 11th. If you've never heard of Singles Day, it's the largest consumer event in the world. Singles Day in China is an annual shopping event whose gross merchandise value on Alibaba reaches $38.4 billion just last year alone. Singles Day sales in China are larger than Amazon Prime Day. Black Friday and Cyber Monday combined just for scale. So think about all of those holidays here domestically in the US when we think of these huge billion dollar numbers, right? Uh, nothing compares to Singles Day in China and uh, Alibaba, right? So mar this marks a very hefty opportunity for struggling US brands, right? They're not pitted against each other right now in terms of the consumers they serve, but they are running into each other, meaning Amazon and Alibaba in other markets like India and Southeast Asia. Now China is surpassing the US as the largest retail market in the world, and Alibaba is the largest business to consumer platform in China. And people really underestimate Alibaba in terms of what it represents on this global stage, right? Amazon and Alibaba both are, however, competing for scale and prestige. Alibaba tends to be more sophisticated than Amazon, and that's where the competition aspect of it comes in, the perception as a global e-commerce leader, right? Tech giants have been increasingly working to appeal to small businesses, while oftentimes positioning themselves as these altruistic partners amid economic uncertainty, particularly during the COVID era, right? Tech companies are also relying very largely on small businesses to help them achieve scale. In May, Facebook introduced Facebook shops with the goal of helping small businesses sell online. 75% of Facebook's $70 billion ad revenue comes directly from small businesses. And in June, Google made Google Maps advertising free for small, business, small businesses. This month, Amazon held their first Amazon Accelerate conferences for small business, and Ex Amazon Accelerate will help small businesses find new ways to grow and expand while also creating new con connections. Earlier this year, Amazon launched something called Common Threads, a CFDA initiative bringing small business, uh, small fashion designers, rather, uh, brands back to Amazon. A first for the platform, which is generally known for having very low priced clothing, right? For global or for Tmall Global at Alibaba, the Pitch Fest uh, is an effort to publicize their opportunity and their resources. So even if a company isn't chosen for Pitch Fest, it will be beneficial to initiate the conversation with interested brands. Selected brands will then be fast tracked to sell on their marketplace with advice on product selection, pricing, and marketing for the Chinese consumer. They'll also have use of Tmall Global's overseas fulfillment program, which will include uh, products that are shipped out of Los Angeles and access to sales and customer preference information. 
Alibaba has 874 million mobile users monthly, and its Tmall Global Marketplace is the largest cross-border business-to-consumer market in China. It's also a moment to position the company as a proactive, friendly player at a time when the Trump administration has come after big Chinese tech companies, specifically uh, TikTok and WeChat, right? And this could extend to others like Alibaba. However, China has become an influential market for brands amid this global pandemic and initially due to lost sales to the Chinese consumer and now because it's one of the first regions to recover and rebound from COVID. Tmall's working to fill out some of their subcategories in apparel. There's a very big interest in athleisure wear and in beauty, Instagram driven beauty brands with high quality ingredients and vibrant color cosmetics are in high demand. The ideal brands will be unique either in their brand story or in the product itself. And the beauty opportunity is even larger than fashion. Uh, for many popular brands, there's a chance that Chinese consumers are already talking about them and someone might be selling them without the brand even knowing, right? In the past three months, more than 100 US brands have joined this platform, which is more than double the number during the same period of last year. Recent US brands include a skincare brand Supergoop, ColourPop, uh, athleisure wear brand Avocado, and Everlane. And for fashion uh, and luxury brands, right, the Chinese consumer represents about 40% of the global luxury sale, of global luxury sales. And wealthy consumers are going to move beyond uh, the Gucci's and the Louis Vuitton's of the world that everyone knows, right? They're looking for niche fashion. They're looking for specific things to display exclusivity. And this is certainly where Alibaba can thrive. Let's move on over to take a look at what's going on with Coach. So Coach has reinvented their digital experience with Jean-Michel Basquiat. They've launched this month uh, with a campaign featuring uh, Basquiat's family alongside the faces of Coach Jennifer Lopez, Michael B. Jordan, and more of their brand ambassadors. And Coach, uh, Coach and Jean-Michel Basquiat have introduced Basquiat's art world and or artwork and values to this entire new generation through the lens of family, right? Whether that's the family we're born into or the one that we choose for ourselves. And this is inspired by this current moment. It spotlights Basquiat's vision of this bold expression of activism through art and his desire, as he once stated, to be a part of a family of artists. So let's take a look at their campaign video, which I think expresses that really beautifully. Basquiat painted his reality. There was a certain freedom that he would emote in his work. I love that authenticity. <laughs> Afro-American, Puerto Rican, new wave. John michelles art means controlled chaos, individuality. It's personal. It's political. His art has an amazing way of, of making you cry and feel a whole lot of joy. He put on the canvas what is normally not celebrated. Hip-hop, graffiti, race, power, money, uh, the so bringing Basquiat's art into a new generation, Coach has dedicated its art fashion collaboration to this like one of a kind digital experience, right? For the first time, um, customers can play with the artist's original motifs, right? So let's take a look at what that looks like in practice. Um, consumers and fans can scan a QR code in the store to access this new digital activation that features a special AR filter, which showcases the art of Jean-Michel Basquiat in this playful new way. It's also a play on Rexy, which is uh, the, of course, um, mascot for Coach, right? And using the filter, you can place uh, Rexy, the, the basquiat version of Rex, Rexy, uh, anywhere you want, right? Coach has also created an innovative TikTok game exploring the work of Basquiat in a playful and interactive way as well. In Coach China, this is the first uh, uh, luxury house to work with TikTok on an AR game, which is certainly uh, very innovative considering many brands have not been able to crack the code of TikTok. The 
Berlin. So this is a fantastic example of very smart design, innovation, and gamification, right? It's really uh, brilliant that they took all of these uh, concepts and built them into this one campaign. And of course, you know, Coach is an American heritage brand, so teaming up with an American artist, right? Coach is a New York-based brand. Basquiat is a New York-based artist. This was a perfect marriage for them. And all of these digital experiences and physical experiences for this collection are just taking everything to the next level, right? Further immersing them into the brand story and engaging with uh, consumers in a new way across different kinds of channels and different platforms. And you can activate the latest Coach and Jean-Michel Basquiat digital experience at any Coach store near you. Now, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of our projects. So from Arsenal, New York, as always, if you are a Windows Wear member, please upload your projects. Make sure that everything is current and up to date so that you, you can be featured on our Tuesday Windows Wear Live. Here we have a project by Arsenal, New York. This is Arsenal for Balmain, working with Balmain. Together we are strong, hashtag Balmain Ensemble. So showcasing a form of uh, solidarity. Let's take a look at what Vista Group is up to this week. So for the Vista Visual Group, this is a large format uh, printing and production, uh, project pre-production, print production, and installation all done by Vista Visual Group. Absolutely beautiful work. Let's take a look at Studio XAG. So Studio XAG is working on the first in an evolving series of windows that they've designed, produced, and installed uh, for Napa Pajiri's fall, winter 2020 season. Icons focuses attention on the brand's status as a symbol of exploration and innovation since their founding in 1987. So that does it for our Tuesday edition of uh, Windows Wear Live. Thank you so much for joining me. This Thursday at 3 p.m. for our Windows Wear Live with our members, we will have Happy Returns. The creative team for Happy Returns will be giving a fantastic uh, chat and presentation. So please join us on Thursday at 3 p.m. for that. And next Tuesday at 3 p.m. we'll be taking a look at some more news stories. Please join us then. Have a fantastic afternoon, everyone.